Hey, oh, it's me, Brian. <laughs> I got you in this morning. Um, this, I've been trying to make this video for like the last week. <laughs> right? I got, you know, like, it's all a bunch of different little clips, so I'm just going to put them all together and make a video. Right? <laughs> what the heck, you know? Here, update. Uh, Tracy's doing pretty good. Uh, her incision, you know, saying where all the stitches are and stuff, it's healing up really good. It looks really good. The swelling, most of the swelling in her hip and her upper thigh has gone down. We, she's been having a problem lately with her feet swelling up. We don't know why, you know what I'm saying? But last night she slept, you know, we, we did the elevating thing. And last night she slept with both of her feet, you know, her feet elevated at her knee, right? And this morning her swelling was down, you know, a lot, right? But, she, but you know, and, she, you know, she's in pain mode, <laughs> Right, but but that's to be expected. It's been like two weeks now. You know what I'm saying? She's walking really good. She's walking a lot better, right? Uh, this, she's healing at a rate right now where we should have been last October, right? You know what I'm saying? Instead of, you know, instead of all the bush in between. But right now she's, you know, she's probably about 75, 80% maybe. Her mobility's good. She walks straight. You know what I'm saying? She's doing kind of good, except for the pain, right? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Thank you, all of you that have been following along, you know what I'm saying, praying, you know what I'm saying, good wishes and all that stuff. She really, truly does appreciate it all. She does. <laughs> all right, you know what I'm saying? All right, thank you. All right, and, and so, right, um, let's see, what is that going to talk about? <laughs> There's really not much to talk about, the war. So let's, since, since I did Ukraine, this, you know, the history of struggle, <laughs> that video, now let's, let's look at it from the other side, you know what I'm saying? Because, because we were talking to Joe the other day, Teresa's therapy guy, you know what I'm saying? And, and he, we, we were talking about Putin, right? And he said, dude, you need to do a show about Putin. What do you think about Putin? I said, well, there's not much to think about Putin. Let's hear it, like always, history, right? Vladimir Putin was a spy for the KGB way back in the day. Yeah, he was. That's where he started. He was a colonel in the KGB, right? And he worked his way up. Right, he did not. No, keep this in your mind. Right, he was a spy, so that means he's already devious, he's already underhanded, he was already, you know, messed up in the head. Right, and he, and he worked his way up. And this was back when there was the SSR, right, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, they were true communists, <laughs> right, and said power struggles, all that shit, you know what I'm saying? Brezhnev, Keith, you know, Khrushchev, right, you know, Stalin, Lenin, right, all of them, they were all, you know, the same way. Right? And, uh, so he has a full understanding, right, of not only how the Soviet system works, but how the new Russian Federation works, because he created most of it, he built most of it, and, you know, changed it all around, right, to suit his own needs, because he knew he was going to be the Russian leader for the rest of his life. He knew. Just like all the rest of them. They all were the leader until they died or were killed. Right? So, in his mind, Right, he just wants to gain back you know, the territory that was that rightfully belonged to Russia in the beginning, for since way back. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like I already said, so I, you know they fought all those wars over to keep it. You know what I'm saying? Right now, he's not going to give up. Right? You know, yeah, it's going bad for him right now. Yes, yes, he believed his generals. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just like it's just like any president over here believes his generals. You know what I'm saying? It's just that, you know, we probably have a you know better understanding of the technical battlefield, you know what I'm saying? And you know, and troop assessments and other stuff like that because we got better, you know, better equipment, right? And we can see we can see farther, <laughs> right? You know, and, and our and our people on our side, you know what I'm saying, are doing the job because they know that it's the right thing to do. The people over there on his side are doing their job to the best of their ability, right, you know, with, with an axe over their neck. They already fired a couple of generals, two, three guys, because they because they stalled, because the Russian, you know, assault didn't, didn't achieve what it was supposed to achieve in the first seven days. It's been a month, right? The Ukrainians have fought them hard and bitterly, <laughs> right? They're not giving up either. It's the Russian monster. You understand? The only way Putin's going to stop is if Putin dies. Right, you know what I'm because because he, he, just like Mr. Trump, even if they vote him out of office accidentally or something happens, 
right from the behind but back to the scenes he's still going to put the squeeze on everybody you know what i'm saying right where putin is making his mistake is this is that he's just throwing troops at this thing trying to just overpower them right when when the ukrainians are way better trained right they're they're highly equipped you know obviously they are if they're fighting back so good you know saying and they have the mo- correct mindset they're fighting for their lives for their freedom right putin's soldiers are just fighting that this is their job you know what I'm saying they were you know like i i i seen a couple of things read a couple of things where where us cia analysts are saying you know, are believing that that a lot of the ground troops that putin has put in are are just recruits right you know throwaway soldiers you know at the very beginning right that was his mistake he did not send in his crack troops to do a blitzkrieg that's what he tried to do but he used the wrong equipment right now the ukrainians got the upper hand because now the, the latest updates are that the ukrainians are, are are fighting to gain back territory that they lost initially right off the top so that tells me that the ukrainians are winning they're winning the ground war right and if and if, if if the un <laughs> Right? You know what I'm saying? If they rally around Ukraine to supply you and know, resupply them, you know what I'm saying, like I said, within limits, right? You know what I'm saying Ukraine has a chance to actually win this war, you know what I'm saying, and push the Russians back out or force Putin to withdraw. Right? But then that that's just a stalemate. Right? In Putin's mind, he has to win. Just like Mr. Trump still bitching about the elections being stolen when it's, it's there's when when there's already been a whole group of people that told on him and said right i mean he trumps you know putin is lucky because he's the absolute leader uh mr trump isn't I mean, mr trump could end up going to jail right and then there's going to be a lot of disappointed people right and sam well in russia the people might not you know they might not be vocal they might not be voicing their opinion because 25,000 of them have been arrested for voicing their opinion but I'm pretty sure a lot of the russian people right do not agree with mr putin's measures and and his his policies right what do you think of that joe what right? and so right i'm i'm a staunch defender of america not getting involved in this 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 is this, this this goes back generations and generations and generations and generations right of where, where they're fighting you understand right i'm all in favor of freedom right and supporting the ukrainian people to fight for their freedom right we all should be right you understand but mind you this putin ain't going to give up he might he might pull back he might withdraw he might you know but he's just going to you know pump up his, his soldiers he's going to pump up his army some more he's going to go back at him again until somebody comes up with the right combination right you know what I'm saying of negotiating points that both sides right can agree on you know what I'm saying and that the rest of the world supports it's me Brian <laughs> right the, you know, please, you know, follow along because there's going to be more clips after this one. This is just not the video. Here's a question for you, Rhonda. How come the weeds always grow first? Look, yeah, look, everything is still dead. It's just barely starting to come alive. The little, little, little lily things or whatever they are growing. But look, the trees are just nothing. Right? The little flower bushes are nothing. Right? Look at this one. This one. <laughs> he's still frozen almost look at that but but if you look at the ground we got weeds everywhere weeds everywhere what the heck is that right, the rest of the desert is just you know dead what's up Derby? huh what's the matter huh doing a love on the camera huh this is what Derby's problem is, is that we ran out of tree treats, kitty cat treats the other day, all right, and, right, we tried their, their other favorite, which is tuna,
Right. And he's been beside himself ever since. Now he's trapped inside the fence and <laughs> sniffing the ground. America! Up and down all morning. Hello, it's me, Brian. <laughs> this is probably the warmest spot right now in the whole yard. Sitting right here at the back of the house because the wind is blowing from the north. It's headed towards the south about oh, 10 miles an hour, so sustained. I do. All right. Uh, out there, <laughs> out, you know, we're up against the wall right here at the back of the house, and the sun is beaming down right here. It's probably like about you know, in the high 60s, low 70s, right here in this spot. You know, because it's just blank heat right here. All right, but out there, you know, saying it's only like 42 degrees with the wind factor. You know, it's just shaping up. This is like the third or fourth day in a row. Where it's been really nice in the mid morning. Because I think it's like around noon 30 right now. All right, and, you know, so the birdies are all coming back. You know, saying squirrels. There's one over there barking and barking and barking. And Doobie's been trying to get him. Alright, this morning, I, I, we had, you know, some <laughs> military maneuver events, I think, you know, military maneuvers, right, up in the sky above us, which is kind of a little bit, you know, abnormal, right, I mean, yes, we are surrounded by, you know, top secret, you know, military government bases, and to the north of us, a couple hundred miles, is the air, is the Naval Air Station at Fallon, Right, and then over there, about 60 miles or so, is the Nevada Test Center where they blew up all the bombs. And then over there, about 100 miles or so, is Area 51. Yeah, we are surrounded, right? But normally they don't they don't fly, you know, sortie missions on this side of the mountain, right? The Toyobi Range right here, because you know that way that way is mostly Nevada. <laughs> Nothing's like this out here, really. Nothing. But this morning there was a bunch of there was a bunch of chasing each other around. Right, it was over here in the sky, there was some more over here. And there was this one odd low contrail that went straight across over the top of the mountain. Right, straight, flat level, straight. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what that one was from, but wherever it was, it was big because it left a double contrail. Right, and uh, there was, I mean, normally the air traffic from here, the commercial air traffic runs that way, east to west, over that way. You know, so it, you know, they were training, they were doing, I don't know if they were doing red flag games. Uh, out of Fallon, or if they're just training, you know what I'm saying, or these, these guys got a little bit carried away and got outside the boundaries, or what, but they, they went at it for a good 30, 40 minutes, you know, that's a bunch of contrails, you know, it was really cool, it really was, I didn't get any video of it, because, you know, I didn't get any, we didn't really know what was going on until towards the end of it, right, but, uh, yeah, I mean, they they were training for something, right, I, now, I don't know if that was just, you know, the Navy pilots out of, you know, out of Fallon, you know, doing what they do, or if it was the Air Force pilots, you know, saying out of Creech, because the Creech Air Base down there at Indian Springs, right, you know, at the edge of all the, you know, the Area 54 stuff, right, uh, that, that Creech Air Base is a drone base, drones and helicopters, and they fly drones out of there, so they, they could be doing some training, they could, they, there's a possibility that there's a couple of pilots, you know, Ukrainian pilots that, you know, got trained, <laughs> You know, on the, how to use the latest, you know, technology, you know, say air defense systems and stuff. Who knows? It, it could have been just anything. It could have been, you know, but it was definitely going on, you know, saying in the state of the, state of the, you know, heightened alert, you know, now, you know, saying it could have been anything. Right. Yeah, it ain't slowing the neighbor kids down. They've been racing up and down the street on their quads and their dirt bikes all morning long. All right, spring's coming and they all know it. Everybody knows it. Uh, um, as for, um, oh, I, forgot, I forgot what your name was now, but no, bro, you can't use the arrow garden machine to grow mushrooms. That's a totally different science growing mushrooms. Mushrooms don't need water or none of that stuff, dude. They just need a small enclosed, you know, antiseptic environment so that the mycelium mushroom, the actual mushroom can grow, right? You know, that, that, that's a whole different science, bro. You know, you can't use it for that. But you, but you can't clone it. You can't use it for a cloning machine. It worked really good. Our, our little clones are doing real good in the dirt now. Right? And, uh, you know, and here's the odd thing about it. You know, see, I, I posted that video 
you know, saying that little review video and, and, and YouTube determined that it was ineligible for monetization because of, of not, not, you know, uh, probably because the plants were growing out of the little machine. I never said once, you know, I never referred, I never intended, I never, you know, the, the little quick review is about the machine itself. I, I don't see how, how the, you know, that's kind of arbitrary there, YouTube. <laughs> it's okay, it's all good. I post it anyway because I really don't care. Right? Uh, it's, not, it's not about the money for me. It's about, you know, putting stuff out there for, that's good, right? Because, you know, nowadays, you know, I mean, the, at the rate we're all going right now, you know what I'm saying? In 10 years, there's going to be no truth out there anymore. In fact, the truth is going to be really hard to find with all of the false, you know, misleading advertising and marketing strategies. It's in all the disinformation from all the different players. All the spies putting out disinformation and bullshit that I'm telling you, 10 years from now, you're going to be hard pressed to find anything that's real anymore. There's two of them, male and a female. The female's sitting there a little bit to the side behind me. You can't see her because she's sitting in the crick of a branch. Yeah. Pretty cool stuff, huh? You got him a spot right here. Look at that. <laughs> the wind is blowing. I don't know if you can see it. See the little flag over there on the car. I'm standing here in the lee. <laughs> the lee. The lee of the wind. Me and Doobie trying to smoke this here bomber. Hey, -o. It's me, Brian. <laughs> it's currently uh, 8, 12 a.m. Monday morning. All right? Uh, the <laughs> ambient air temperature is somewhere around, oh, I don't know, 25 degrees or so. No wind. The humidity is real low. There's a lot of dirt in the air because yesterday the wind was like about 40 miles an hour all day. And <laughs> sometime during the night, right, we ran out of propane. <laughs> no, no, Teresa's not here. She's still in Vegas. <laughs> so this morning, <laughs> we're going to take the propane tanks off, and we're going to go into Hadley, <laughs> I guess the propane is about four or five miles away to the south, you know what I'm saying? Hey, Terry Kenny, does this look like Las Vegas? <laughs> right? We are currently, right now, exactly 267.2 miles away from Right, UMC Hospital, where Teresa is, in Las Vegas. This is where we live, bro. Right here. Middle of nowhere. Everybody that watches, everybody that's followed along for at least the last year knows that this is where I live. Right? I'm not homeless. Right? I'm not a bum. I got money because I got to go pay for the propane, dumbass. Right? 60 bucks. Right? What do you do? What's your fabulous job that you have? How much money do you make every year? You got the guts to tell us that? Right? My friend Noy, he's asking me, who the hell is this weirdo? Why don't you answer him? Right? Noy made a comment. Right? Noy knows me. He's known me for years. Right? And Sam, dude, what's wrong with you? What is what is really wrong with you, Terry Kenny? Right? <laughs> Anyways, propane, the correct way to disconnect your propane tanks from your camp trailer. Where's the wrench? <laughs> Where did the request wrench go? There we go. First things first is you need a tool to disconnect, you know what I'm saying? Secondly, right, you turn off the thermostat, the heater, you turn it off at the thermostat and you turn the temperature thing all the way down. And then you, if it's running, you let it run until it stops. And then you give it about, oh, 10 minutes or so because sometimes, you know what I'm saying, some of these older camp trailers, Sometimes some of the propane, you know, bleeds through when there's not enough pressure, right? And, and it can fill up the inside of the camp trailer, 
You know what I'm saying? So you want to open the door, let it air out. You know what I'm saying? A good 10, 15, 20 minutes. Right? You know what I'm saying? And then after that, the next step is to make sure that both tanks are turned off. If you only have one big tank, make sure it's turned off. Right? Now, it doesn't matter where you live on the planet. <laughs> right? Propane and LPG bottles, right? You know what I'm saying? Right? They all thread backwards. They're, they don't thread righty tidy lefty loosey. Right? They thread lefty tidy righty loosey. Right? So when you're taking them off, because they're made out of brass, you know what I'm saying? You want to remember that. Because if you come if you screw up the, the brass fitting here, if you flat if you round it off and stuff, you'll never get it off again. Right? And these and you will be doing this a lot. <laughs> Remember, righty loosey. Propane fitting set up things on your camp chair to have this this clamp down device. Spin it loose. Yeah, that one's empty. Oh yeah. yeah that one's empty too. Alright. <laughs> Disclaimer! This stuff is flammable. Right? And saying no smoking within 25 feet when you're disconnecting or reconnecting your propane tanks. Right? <laughs> right? You want to check and make sure that your fittings are good and not gummed up. You know what I'm saying? That everything's right. <laughs> 